Okay, Keith, to start, we're going to talk, of course, about Everton. Two points deduction. What was your initial reaction to that news? And how are you now feeling for the rest of the season? Well, I've got to say it was uh, another surprise. And the surprise wasn't so much about the scale of the points deduction, but it was about the complete mess once again has been exposed by the Premier League, I'm afraid. We now, believe it or not, in the realms of half-point penalties uh, as well as one-point penalties. So just think for a minute if somebody ends up getting half a point back in an appeal, so you end up with, you know, 30 and a half points uh, in the relegation on the Premier League. It's getting into the realms of complete clown stuff at the moment. It's ridiculous. <laughs> also, again, once again, I didn't think they could do it, but we found ways to go against the other judgments already made and there's conflicting stories again. And the biggest one of all was to find out that there's now potentially another hearing out of this hearing that could go into next season. And if you sum it all up, I mean, well, you can't sum it up because the whole thing's carrying on, but they're finding new depths to sink to in terms of damaging the Premier League product. Hmm. If we look at this immediate case first, Keith. I mean, do you think they are going to appeal? And actually, would that then take place after the season? Because, of course, we know it's taken, we've, the, the two cases in themselves have taken absolutely ages. Is it likely to finish probably post-season? Yeah, it's the timetable that's been set would mean that if Everton do appeal, which they made in their statement yesterday, said they would appeal, and they were pre preparing the appeal already, then that would mean it would come out uh, probably May 24th would be the final decision. And that is, of course, after the season was ended. So we've reached that point that we always hope could be avoided and could have been avoided. I know it could have been avoided if, if sensible steps had been taken. But here we are. And then we've now got this extra appeal, uh, sorry, the extra hearing hanging over it as a dispute about what is allowable. Um, this is, you know, it, 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 it's hard to believe. So yesterday it was staggering. Uh, what I saw yesterday as well, now, you and I have been talking about this for a number of weeks, and we've always said that, you know, we'd rather be talking about football on the pitch than, than uh, football in the courtrooms. But what I saw yesterday was that people are now getting used to this, and there was a complete outpouring. I mean, it, it, for the first time when Everton got 10 points, it maybe took two or three weeks for all the MPs to get together. Yesterday afternoon, straight away, MPs were on Twitter, were on there straight away, voicing their opinion. Fans were on there. They've got, there's a much bigger understanding of the mess that's being made. Every pundit I heard yesterday on the radio and the TV were saying the same thing about the inconsistencies, just the things that you and I have been saying for the last few weeks, and we've been proven now to be right. But now people are catching on as to what a mess this is. And uh, it's just, you know, it's now in the, in the consciousness of the football fan. They're starting to understand the uh, a little bit of the intricacy about it. Although I've got to say that yesterday's 60-page statement, which I had to read through, is now becoming even more complex than the other ones before. We've now got barristers dancing on the head of a pin, uh, really, about trying to work out why they're not taking certain precedents from other judgments, etc. And each one, as we've always said, the dangerous thing is they're very subjective, and they all decide what they think should be the right thing at that time. And that's different from the last panel before. I mean, are you sort of summing that up, Keith? Are you then frustrated that the Premier League disregarded, say, the impact of Usmanov and COVID? I know you've shared over the last few weeks about the fact that hopefully going into this second hearing, they would be more understanding. What, what do you make of that sort of, yeah, that, that, that sort of news? Well, they did actually give mitigating factors now for the Usmanov um, sponsorship of Finch Farm, the training academy. They didn't give um, any mitigation for the naming rights for the stadium. Now, one thing that I, I just want to quickly read to you from the judgment from yesterday. It said that the, the Premier League had suggested to Mr. Kenyon, who is the commercial director at Everton, there is a, as a result of the risk and the Russian annexation of Crimea and the Salisbury poisonings in 2018, Everton had taken an inordinate level of commercial risk by putting all its eggs in one basket. Now, I find that quite staggering that you're talking about the poisonings in Salisbury that Everton should have not taken on a, a very good sponsor at that time. Don't forget, this is the same time we had Roman Abramovich owning Chelsea and the Premier League themselves had Russian broadcasters. But all of a sudden now it's being argued 
uh, that no, it's it, it, you should have realized that uh, taking on a Russian sponsor had a big risk. Well, I'm afraid that doesn't stand up to any scrutiny and in my view of common sense. And running a football club, if I had a sponsor who'd already proven that he had you know, sponsored our training ground and we were in serious discussions about naming rights for the stadium, I would say there's a pretty good chance that's going to come true. And so I think it'd be fair to budget for that going forward. But the Premier League were arguing very much against that. And I think on very shaky grounds. Now, luckily, uh, the Premier League's arguments there were thrown out and Everton were awarded uh, this time half a point, I believe, uh, in terms of mitigating factors. So it, it's very strange to understand how this group, this panel, can give us some, some points deduction um, relief for the Russian sponsorships. But the first ones didn't. And this is what's so angry and so annoying about the whole thing. Does that just effectively sum up then, Keith, that either it needs to be the same panel every time or that something needs to be done differently going forward? So it's not subjective, but there is clear black and white for points deductions or sanctions. I think it may help uh, that if there was the same panel. But I think what really is important and the, the biggest point that came out of yesterday for me, and again, let me just uh, come back to the... Um, the point here about the Premier League is that the Premier League have become so adversarial in this this process. I thought this was about trying to come to a, you know, Everton is a Premier League member, they're a shareholder. And it isn't really about fighting uh, and being so bitter from the Premier League to try and get to a solution. It's about trying to get to the truth and to then move forward. But let me just read one last bit, which sums it all up for me. This is from the Independent Commission yesterday, talking about the Premier League's arguments. And it said, in our view, many, if not most of the criticisms levelled against the club in this respect by the Premier League are unwarranted, overstated or both. Now, I find that incredible. The Independent Commission is saying that, you know, the Premier League is slinging so much mud at a member club and the Independent Commission just doesn't believe them. I would have thought that the Premier League should be taking a very clear, impartial view, a balanced opinion, and then try and move forward to get to the truth. And I think that's what everybody would like to see the Premier League play that role, rather than being this big, bad aggressor uh, and trying to stitch clubs up. Mm. Compared to then to Forest, do you think Everton should feel hard done by? I mean, we know they've got six points. Everton now end with eight. Is it disappointing after everything that Everton have gone through take away the fact that there might be a hearing for this as well as it stands does it disappoint you yes it does disappoint me i mean the premier league have tried to take off 17 points off everton this season if you look at it now you know that's five points on this last hearing and 12 initially was the initial tariff before 17 points and you get nine points if you go to administration so something is not right in uh, in the state of denmark to quote shakespeare and i'm afraid this is a shakespearean you know, disaster that's that's coming here. So I, I just, nobody can understand the logic and how you get to 17 points for a start. And any any common sense thinking person would, would agree, I'm sure. So what is now the hope, Keith, for the appeal? Is it down to one point? Is it it's removed entirely? Is it half a point? Would, would you be surprised if Everton do finish the season on X.5? You know, is, is that actually a likely outcome? It is actually, funnily enough. Uh, I think the appeal will, will again state... Well, we'll focus mainly, I believe, on Everton's cooperation with the Premier League this time. Now, let me just quickly cover that point as well. Another big mess we, we've got ourselves in here. In the Everton 10-point first round, the Premier League stated that, that all Premier League clubs should cooperate and that should be working in good faith and that should be a minimum requirement of all clubs. They then gave Forrest a two-point mitigation uh, for their cooperation. This time, they've given Everton half a point for their mitigation. And yet, what I just read to you is what the Premier League have said about the claims that the Premier League have made against Everton's cooperation. So basically, you've now got uh, Everton saying that they've cooperated fully. Apparently, there are nine levels that have to be, the boxes have to be ticked uh, to show cooperation. It appears Everton only managed to tick seven or eight, it would appear, in order to get some mitigation. Did not Forest, you know, tick nine? We just don't know. And, you know, what is good cooperation? I mean, in this stage now, we're seeing that you've got an adversarial relationship with the Premier League and the club is a defendant. Now, if you're a defendant, 
I would think it's quite right to defend yourself and cooperating isn't always the right way to defend yourself. So I'm lost uh, as to where you, how this is being played out. I say the Premier League have, have made it um, a very strange way to try and read the rules and how you should cooperate. Everton did clearly cooperate. The Independent Commission said they did cooperate. Um, I just don't know anymore. And again, every every point we mentioned today, there's just opposing thoughts and ideas. I mean, Keith, again, it remains to be seen what does happen with that appeal. And if, if, it, if Everton do, like we both think they will... As it stands, if we focus for a second on field, are you concerned at all from a relegation perspective? And now there are another two points that have been taken off. Actually, relegation now does become a real, you know, a, 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 um, it does become a reality for the club. Very much so. I mean, look, you know, just working backwards from the last game of the season, we're away at Arsenal. Now, you know, we know that could mean that Arsenal could be playing that game to win the title. Uh, Everton, in theory, could be playing that game to stay up. Um, you know, there's some tough games for Everton to play now. We've still got Liverpool to come to Goodison and uh, we're away at Chelsea next Monday. Uh, listen, this is a, a very tough run-in that we've got. And so, yes, two points are going to be pretty crucial. Even half a point back could become crucial. And I never, ever thought I'd be saying something like that in my life. You've just watched a segment from Football Insider's brand new podcast, The Inside Track, with me, Lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show. Thanks very much for tuning in. Please do give the video a like, comment your thoughts on the topic, and feel free to share on your social media pages. If you want to listen to the full podcast episode, click the link in the description below. Keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on The Inside Track.